man, hit him up, hit him up, bumble man, move him on, hit him up, raw high. It's all right, Mr. Fever. Can't say the same for the weather. Looks like we went for a little wet. Yep. That sure come up sudden. I've seen freak storms, but nothing like this. Look, Wish, uh, I don't know if it's dry enough, but see if you can make up a fire and fill up some coffee. We'll feel like it. What's the damage? It's just wet, mostly. Hey, what's your trouble? Well... I have seen something, Senor Favor. A strange man standing on the hill. It could have been a man. One of them disappeared right in front of us. All right, that's enough of that. Forget it. What's this all about? Oh, just seeing things bad enough. We're really in trouble. They start making it out to be a ghost. Mr. Favor. Gentlemen, I wasn't sure, but I thought I saw your fire. Then, in the confusion of the storm, there's something wrong. Where'd you come from? Over there, a place called Homeville. That's 50 miles from here. Uh, correction, sir. It's three days, a dozen mountains, and one pair of good boots from here. <laughs> you walked the ways? Only since that uh, great beady-eyed monster I called Good Friend Horse decided to part company with me and my wagon. And that on the open air side of a cliff. Whew. Aside from my neck, this was all that I managed to salvage. Who are you, anyway? My cob by name, sir. My cob. Entrepreneur by profession. And foot loose and foot sore by choice. Where are you headed? Before that four-legged trader and I parted company, I was trying to get to a town called Sloan's Crossing. That's another 50 miles from here. <laughs> yeah. And me with a pair of feet that just gave up walking. Perhaps I could ride along with you. Yeah, well, sure, we can find room in the supply wagon for you. But only as far as the next town. Fair enough? He who's hungry never finds the bread hard. 
Eminently fair enough, sir. Why don't you get that fire started? Get another customer for stew. Yeah, well, have any of you Jaspers got any dry matches? Mine got all soaked. You got some dry ones in the supply wagon, ain't you? Well, they got all dumped and went on, Mr. Paver. Fine thing. Everything's soaked. It's going to take me forever to build a fire. Uh, possibly I can help. Get some fine shavings, huh? I had no idea it would really work. Made the kind of trip he said he made in that kind of condition. Well, you should get him under some blankets. Uh, he's just tuckered out. Nothing a little hot broth won't help. Somebody come help carry him over under the wagon. I just thought of something. Huh? That rain we had soaked down everything and everyone real good. Except him, he's bone dry. Hmm. Yeah, I thought so too. Take till noon for things to dry out. And I like a chance to brew up some cherry elixir. Men are all gonna have colds after that wetting they got. Gotta have something for them. Hey, what about that fella? What about him? Kind of a strange duck, isn't he? Not strange, dear. Just different. My cop. Sure is a queer name. Not as queer as some names I've come across. For instance, George Washington Wishbone. Well, what's on your mind? Nothing. Just that name keeps teasing around in my mind like I'd heard or seen it somewhere before, but can't just say when or how. You said a couple of things. Well, then like how he come into camp last night, bone dry in spite of all that rain. Just like it had fallen all around him instead of on him. What are you getting at? Nothing. Just saying there's something mighty strange about a fellow like that. Not strange, Wish. Just different. I heard of a man like that one time. Yeah, where? Down in the nations. A couple of years ago. Only he called himself, uh, Car... Cartiphilus. Something like that. He was nothing but sore trouble, according to the story I heard. What kind of trouble? Uh, it's bad trouble. Seemed like after this fella showed up, nothing ever went right and everything went wrong. Fixing to boil up some of that wild cherry elixir, Mr. Wishbone? Cartophilus. Beg your pardon? What happened to those books I picked up in Tascosa? Books? For reading, you idiot. Now, I had a whole box of them. They're in a supply wagon, Mr. Wishbone. Under that mule harness and sack of beans. Hope they didn't get wet. Adopted by the Wanderer, Batudeus, Ahasuerus, and Mycob. Mycob the Wanderer.
Come on, let's hustle with that canvas so we can get out of here. Mushy, come on, give him a hand. Good service, your favor. Good morning. Ah, what a beautiful day. A storm brings such freshness to the world. Uh. Don't you feel that way, Mr. Favor? Cost me a half a day's travel and missing some stock. It's hardly a blessing. That which is to be, must be. Philosophy ain't gonna get my cattle back. You have to admit it eliminates fear of the future. Huh? Depends on where a man's going. Hey, take uh, Sloan's Crossing, for instance. It's a trail town, as wide open as a place can get. Hardly a peddler's paradise, especially a peddler with nothing to peddle. <laughs> with nothing to peddle. It's true that I've lost my stock. But you see, to a man of commerce, adversity is wedded to Dame Fortune. The turn of the wheel, so to speak. Today, disaster. Tomorrow, the end of the rainbow. Maybe in St. Louis or even Homeville, but not Sloan's Crossing. That's an open grave. You and I both know the only commerce a town like that understands begins and ends with a deck of cards and a stock of six-bit reservation firewater. Still, I must go there. Why? A man with an itch instead of a sense of security ought to know a dead end when he sees one. Not an end, no. A beginning. Not for me. For a man whose life is at stake. What do you mean? A man is going to be hanged at Sloan's Crossing for a murder which he did not commit. I can prove that he's innocent. The man is John Slade. Slade? I know, I know. A notorious criminal. A half-breed, they tell me, damned by the very savages that he led. But still, he's a man unjustly accused. Oh, come on. He's not even human. What he and his pack did on the Pecos and the Red, not even the grave can cover up. Fred, the only justice he's ever going to see is at the end of a rope. For what he did before, perhaps you're right. But not in this case, not for this crime. On the very night, they say that he murdered a man in Sloan's Crossing. He occupied the hotel room next to mine at Homeville. He could not have possibly committed the murder. Slade's gonna have to balance up the books pretty soon. What difference does it make whether it's today or next week? The law is the difference. The law of the land that protects saints and sinners alike. That's up to you. I'm afraid when we get to the next town, you're gonna have to provide your own transportation. Sloan's Crossing is 30 miles out of our way. I may be late. That's your problem. You're riding the supply wagon with Mushy. I'm telling you untruth. Think it, I knew it. By the way you spread the words and sneak up on a fella, ever see easy and polite like, I'd have believed every word of it if you just hadn't topped it off with the biggest whopper I ever heard of. Why, when you said this Hakem fella came from Africa 800 years ago, and he was educated, <laughs> well, you just gave the whole show away. <laughs> hey, look out! Now what? Thunderation are you trying to do? Oh, perhaps it was my fault. You see, I was talking to him as he was Wish, driving. Wish, how did it happen? Now, how do I know? Mikey? Well, Mr. Mike Cobb was telling me some funny stories of, about some folks he knew 18, 800 years ago. 800 years? Wishbone, we're noon here. Mr. Favor. Keep your stories to yourself after this, all right? And try not to confuse him any more than you have to, huh? Sit down, sit down, Mushy. I'll do it. Oh, boy. I, uh, I sent Quince ahead to scout the river. All right. And then, uh, I figure when we get up there, maybe we ought to 
lay over a few days. Let the uh, cattle get some fat on them, huh? Maybe. Maybe. Well, what do you think? Think about what? About what I'm talking about. Is there something the matter with you? Well, there's something the matter with me. Well, you're sitting there like a gravestone, not listening to a thing I'm saying. Uh, something bothering you? This curiosity question marks always bother me. Yeah. Mushy said something about uh, him saying uh, he knew some fellow who died 800 years ago. Well, Mushy gets things all confused. Yeah, well, probably so. Still, how did he walk through that rainstorm without getting wet? There's a line squally coming from behind it. No mystery about that. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. You ever hear the story of the Wanderer? The who? The Wanderer. It's a legend. Seems when Jesus was being taken to be crucified, he stopped in front of a, a shoemaker's shop and asked, could he rest a little bit? And the shoemaker said, no, tarry not before my house, but go on. Then Jesus said, it is you who must go on while others know rest. You shall travel forever. What's that got to do with the uh, peddler? Well, one of the shoemaker's names was Mycob. Wishbone. My cub's a name that's as old as the Old Testament. Nothing legendary about it. It isn't just a name, it's the rest of it. Here, you read this. There's some stories about that legend in there. It says sometimes the wanderer brings good luck, but the others say that the wanderer was nothing but catastrophe married to disaster and committing bigamy with ruin. Well, we had nothing but bad luck since he showed up. Bad luck had nothing to do with that storm or the wagon breaking down. Two coincidences don't make a legend any more than old wives' tales and ghosts and goblins come true. Now, do you want to get packed or do you want me to read you a couple of rhymes out of Mother Goose? Just had my say. Hi. All right, now let's put her on. No, never mind, you stay here, it's all right. Good as new. Mr. Mycob, isn't there anything you can't do? Lieutenant! Turn the herd! Find him west! Can't use a river crossing, Mr. Fever. Country's full of that stuff. Prairie Luxburg. There's enough of it this side of the river to kill half the herd. Couldn't keep them out of it. Uh, speaking of bad luck. Then there were two. It seems that for us, the wind doesn't blow and the cradle cannot rock. You always would read yourself to sleep? Only when the bow is broken and the cradle needs repair, do you always read yourself to sleep? <laughs> eh, yeah, not always. Depends on the book. Take this one. Very interesting. Oh, legends old and new. The seven cities of Cibola, jade mines of Montezuma, lost city of Atlantis. Even the legend of the Wanderer. Of well, the man of many faces. Cartophilus, Potadius, Sahasuros. And Mycob. Uh, you don't think... That... By me, legends and myths are exactly where they belong, between the covers of a book. 
But I'm afraid some of the men believe it. If we have any more bad luck, the responsibility's gonna fall on you. That's what the people at Hart's Corner in New York said two years ago. An omen of death, they called me. Doomsday on the hoof. I guess I've presented you with quite a problem. What are you gonna do, dump me right here now? No, I wouldn't do that for no other reason that uh, I'm running this drive, not superstition. I do like I told you, I'll take you along to the next settlement. Say, there uh, is something about the legend of the Wanderer, though, that piques my interest. I understand from the book he was a man driven by a sense of guilt. He was in torment, trying to make amends for an old injustice. Now, I can understand that man walking a hundred miles to save a renegade like John Slade, but... You question the integrity of an itinerant man of commerce. You sound like a cynic. I understand a cynic is a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Unfortunately, at the moment, I happen to know both. Now, good night, Michael. Sleep well. water boil away. Now get it up here. Yes, sir. Days. I guess we can send Mrs. cooking for that long. Missy, you'll drive the chuck wagon. Now, the only trouble is we'll have to pull somebody off the hood for the supply wagon. Perhaps I can help, Mr. Favor. What do you know about driving a team? Well, I'm not an expert, but I can't follow the chuck wagon. Well, we do need every man we can on the herd in this rough country ahead. All right, then. We should go on the supply wagon. How long do you figure it'll be, my cub, before he can use his arms? Oh, it'll be at least a week. A week? Why, you're out of your week of mushies cooking? Oh, we'll have a mutiny on our hands. Uh, I can cook. He can do. Well, one thing for sure, can't be any worse than mushies cooking. But, boss. But, Mr. Favor. Uh, Mr. Mushy, may I have the time, please? What, Mr. Micah? Oh, never mind, I'll get it. Hey! Go on here. Ah, take a smell of this. Everything's ready. Oh, uh, you know, of course, that my cub is uh, just filling in for you. Sure he is. I hope you all have good appetites. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Us ramrods right. need our energy. Okay. Come here. Go. Ha. Take all this stuff, too. Okay. Yep. 
Out of the witch's cauldron comes the magic of son of a gun stew, Hebrew style. I'm not hungry. Come on, eat it. Come on. Like it or not, it's the only way to keep up your strength. Huh? Good? Here, put your teeth in that. There you are. Second plate, hon. You better grab some before it's too late. I ain't hungry enough to eat that Jonah's grub. That peddler's a traveling disaster. You just mark my word. Miss Favor, you know it's true. You know that man's a jinx. Sloan's crossing after all. Turn him back! Break a little bit early today, ain't you, huh? Just talking to boys. What's so important you have to stop working the herd to talk it over? Mr. Favor, that peddler's a jinx. First it was the rain, then the wagon broke down. Then we run across that prairie Larkspur. And now, we can't get across the river to break us because the river's up. And Mr. Favor, you know as well as I do, the river ain't usually up this time of year. And it was a wishbone. Oh, you sure can't blame Mike up for what happened to Wishbone. I can. What made Mushy stumble when he was carrying on hot water was a doll. A doll that a peddler was carving on. Anything else? Yes, sir. We want you to get rid of him right now. Thinking it over very carefully, this is the way it stacks up. I run this drive, and what I say goes, and I say Mike up can stay with us until Sloan's crossing. Mr. Favor, you, you might find yourself mighty long on cows and mighty short on drovers if anything else happens. Mr. Mercy, is there any more flour? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Mycup. Thank you. Mr. Wishbone, ain't time to sleep yet. When a man's tired, the clock hasn't got anything to do with it. Mr. Wishbone, what's wrong? Nothing. Why are you acting like this? You wouldn't understand. Man just isn't fit for nothing if he don't think he can do something real good. Right? I guess. Even if it's just one little old thing, he's got to believe he can do that better than anybody else. That's right, too. Guess so. Well, I don't think that anymore. What do you mean? My cooking. What's the matter with your cooking? I used to think I was a pretty fair hand with a pot and a skillet. And better than most when it come to doctrine. Then my cob showed me how wrong I was. Well, you better start looking for a new boss, Mushy. 
Mr. Wishbone, this is talking pretty foolish. No, oh, sir. I tasted his cooking. I just couldn't face the men again with that stool of mine. Well, the men are always grumbling about their food. Well, the men got a right to grumble on a long drive like this. I never paid them any mind because I knew I was good. And I don't know that anymore. I just don't know nothing. You'll feel better when you get those bandages off, Mr. Wishbone. You'll see. Your flyer, Mr. Mycup. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mushy. Thank you very much. Anything you want? No. There's something I don't want. You. You're bad luck. You're trouble, and I've had my fill. No man could uh, run away from trouble no more than he can cut off his shadow and bury it. I can't, peddler. All I gotta do is pack your gear and start you running. If you don't do it, I'll do it for you. No, not this way and not now. Maybe you don't hear so good. I said you're leaving tonight, right now. I leave when Mr. Favor tells me to and not before. Maybe I can change your mind. Get up, peddler. I got work to do. I said, get out. I said, get out. Thank you, Mr. Mike, huh? You call me Jinx and Jonas, and then you close your mind to reason and truth. Now look at me. Look past superstition and fear and old tales of incantation and boiling pots and see me. I'm a man. I bleed. I rage. I laugh. I cry. I see. I feel. I even pray. But I'm still a myth, a denizen of the dark, a harbinger of disaster. And why? Because I've committed the crime of being different. Mountains are high, and they're crooked, and they're flat, but they're still mountains. And water is green and blue and white, and it's still water. And I am still a man, just like you. I bring you no bad luck. I bring no disaster, and I certainly do not bring a myth to life that no man can do. Now I will leave. My cob. Aren't you forgetting something? Why, you let our stew cook too long, and you'll burn that pot midnight back. Me, I'm going to faint dead away. I don't get something to eat. Look, uh, you walk out on us now, and uh, we'll wind up eating steers out of our own herd. Come on and get it before we throw it out to the coyotes. All right, must you dish it up? Okay. Hey, 
Just about wraps that up, huh? Except for one thing. Hmm? Funny. Since my cub joined the drive, one thing after another been pushing us towards Sloan Crossing. And now we're going that way. 30 miles out of our way. But we're going that way. Very good. natural to a man with an uncontrollable itch. Moving. But why? There's no need now. What happened with hunters? It did not have to happen, but it did. And what is more, I let it happen. I let another man's fury take the place of my reason, and that is the cardinal act of idiocy. So you're running away? Not running. Walking. Call it uh, the better part of wisdom. Or perhaps uh, insurance against further trouble. You know, you can't run from trouble any more than you can run from a myth. Mr. Fader! Hunt! Hunt well, started running. Hunt uh, tried to turn him. His horse fell right in front of him. Just nothing we could do. Pretty bad, I wish. Oh, not a thing. This is as bad as it can get. Uh. Hopeless. I'm to be a doctor at Sloan's Crossing. Well, there's nothing a doctor can do. Nothing anybody can do. There's always something someone can do, Mr. Wishbone. Even if it's only a word, there's always something. Difficult hours ahead. Now, medicine won't help. Science can't. Only faith. That is all we can give him. Edla. I've been dreaming. Like when I was a kid. 
feel like running forever. Racing all over the mountains. I ain't felt that way in a long time. What's it mean? It means that you're getting better. Wouldn't kid a fellow, would you? Now you get some rest. You stick around, you hear? Now you must rest. Shh. I'll stick around. Ready. We ought to be in Sloan's Cross in a couple hours. Oh, no, no, Mr. Favor, not yet. Not yet? After the stink you made about getting to this town and traveling a hundred miles to save a man's life, and you say not yet? It's Hunt. I can't leave him until it's over. Well, the most he's got to live is a couple of hours at the outside. A man's last hours cannot be measured by the clock. What about Slade? Adler? A dying man's wish is sacred. I would be less than a man if I let him down. I can do only what I have to do when I must do it. No man can bend the hands of a clock any more than he can control his future. Peddler. Scared of you. I'm sorry. It's a funny thing, ain't it? Now you're a real sight of comfort to me. Sloan's crossing by sun up. My cop. You ever want to hire on as a permanent journal, well, you got yourself a job. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Bye, Mr. My cop. Bye, Mr. Mushy. Thank you very much. Prisoner named John Slade? No, not anymore, ain't. Folks around here got a little impatient. Busted in last night, took him out and lynched him. And me, well, I guess I didn't put up much of an argument, Slade being what he was and all. You, uh, you wouldn't be friends of his, would you? 
Oh, no, no. Uh, we just know of him. Thanks a lot. Strange, isn't it? I traveled all this distance, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Oh, I don't know, my cub. Not at the hunt. I think it did to a few Callahans who got their fact and fantasy mixed up. I know it did to me. Well, where do you go from here? Wherever that strange little itch of mine takes me, I guess. As a matter of fact, this little metropolis looks like it could do with a bit of civilization. You're welcome back in the drive, you want. Entrepreneurs and cattle don't mix. My business is people. Even if their business begins and ends with a deck of cars and a stock of reservation firewater. Who knows, perhaps I may even go into saloon keeping business. As a sideline, of course. Good luck, my cub. And to you, Mr. Favor. <laughs>